calling all art teachers. In this video, I will show you exactly how to load a kiln for your bisque or your first firing. I'll give you all of my tips and advice to have a successful firing of your kiln so that your student's hard work doesn't explode into tiny little pieces. Your kiln needs to be empty, clean, and vacuumed. And I have three stilts on each side so that I can put a shelf and fire more pieces of art. I have lots of students and I always need more space. Putting clay in the kiln is like working a puzzle. This is when your clay is the most fragile. So although you're watching me do this very quickly, this whole process took me probably about 40 minutes. I was grading as I loaded the kiln and I had to be really careful with all of the handles and all of the small pieces. Your clay pieces can touch. Just make sure that you leave about a one inch space away from the wall of, or the coils in the wall of the kiln. As I run out of room, I add a shelf. Be careful, it's very heavy, and if you drop it on your clay, you're gonna ruin lots of students' art. Make sure that the stilts are taller than the clay pieces so the shelf isn't resting on top of them. Loading a kiln is one of the most stressful but most exciting parts about teaching ceramics or working with clay. Um, it's scary because students work on something for days, weeks, sometimes months, and then they turn it over to you, and you've gotta load this bad boy carefully without breaking anything. The first firing is called the bisque firing. It's kind of a weird word, but that's for clay that has never been fired before. It's for greenware. And greenware is just a fancy word for clay that's still in the state before it's been fired. Um, but the bisque firing is the first thing you do to make the chemical transformation from clay to ceramics. The bisque firing is where you're gonna have um, explosions. So once it's been fired once and you're glazing, you're not gonna have any more pockets of air or, or steam that's gonna build from pieces. And before you ever put anything in the kiln, it has to be bone dry. And as the name implies, that means clay that has zero moisture in it. The piece to the left is bone dry. You can see it's completely white. The piece in the middle is on the way to being bone dry, but you can tell that the nose, the horns, anything smaller and sticking off your clay is gonna dry faster. The unfinished piece to the right is leather hard. It still has lots of moisture, is visibly darker in color and very, very cold to the touch. This would explode everywhere if you put it in your kiln right now. If you put clay in a kiln and heat it up to 1800 degrees and it has moisture, it's gonna cause steam and that steam is gonna make the clay molecules explode. The other reason clay explodes is if it's too thick and so if it's so thick, it might feel like it's dry on the outside, but the clay is so thick that there might be water or air pockets on the inside of your clay. So as you're teaching, um, make sure students are wedging your clay, you're checking to make sure that everything isn't too thick and that you give it the proper amount of time to dry. Clay takes different amounts of dry, or different amounts of time to dry depending on your climate, how large the pieces are, um, how long you're working on pieces. And so you want to just check your clay. Um, clay that is ready for the kiln is completely not cold to the touch. So if you touch a piece of clay like with your hand and you're like, I think it's not cold or maybe it's a little, don't take any chances. Anytime I've questioned it, I've always opened the kiln to an explosion. And if it has any coldness to it, when you put it in the kiln, that's water or moisture, it will steam and it will nine times out of 10 explode. And then you have to clean it up and explain to the student that you rushed the process. I am an epic procrastinator. So I'm always rushing. I feel like I'm always kind of pushing things to the limit. So timing when you teach things is so important so that you have the you know, the right amount of time, not only to make the, the project, but also it's gotta dry. It's gotta be fired in the bisque fire. And then it also, if you're glazing, you have to fire it again. So really sit back and look at your calendar because time management is key. When you're doing a bisque firing, your clay pieces can touch um, because there's no glaze or anything. And so you can stack your pieces, the pieces can touch. You do need to leave a, about a one inch um, distance from the walls of the kiln and the pieces themselves so they're not too close to the coils. But the nice thing about bisque wear is that you can like really jam it in there carefully. If it's fragile, you don't wanna be the one to break it than me lots of times, but your pieces can touch and you can even stack them. Just make sure if there's openings, like it's a, a vase or a jug, but you don't cover that because any pocket of air will react to the heat and cause an explosion. 
this kiln, we're doing low fire. Um, this is a high fire kiln, but for me and for most of you know the public teaching world, you're gonna be using low fire clay. So all that means is it fires to a lower temperature. For me today, it got up to 1,886 degrees and I set it for cone 05. So you need to look at a cone chart because every cone represents a different temperature. Most of us in the public school world will do low fire clay firing to either cone 05 or 04. And I just fired glaze and um, bisqueware to cone 05. And I put mine on the fast setting. So today it took seven hours to complete. And really that's hashtag public school life. You probably want to do it to medium or slow, but seven hours is kind of my window of work. And so I don't want to get here at like five in the morning and I don't want to stay until five or six. So I have had great success with this kiln and the pieces I do firing it at a, a fast temperature or a fast speed. When your kiln is finished firing, it will make a, a beeping noise and it's going to say complete seven hours. 1886 degrees is the highest temperature that your kiln or my kiln reached. And currently it's 1636. You do not want to open this thing until it has um, cooled down quite a bit, definitely under a thousand degrees. Because when you open it, it's going to pull and rush in all that air. And if you have fragile pieces like little handles, um, they can crack and break because of the like shock of the air and um, glazes that can really mess up the glazes and they can you'll hear the like ping 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 sound so if you're hearing that sound my rule is I fire it during the school day don't leave it unattended and then I let it cool overnight because it takes just about as long to cool as it does to heat up and then in the morning when I open it, it should be ready to go you still want to be careful the next morning because the pieces will retain a lot of the heat. So don't just like reach your hand in there and grab it, but kind of test it out with your hand. And I always have my fireproof gloves just in case. If you do have an explosion, you want to carefully remove all the big pieces and you need to get a shop vac with a brush setting. You can sweep it, but I have found the shop vac with the brush settings. You can kind of clean the coils once a month depending on how often you use your kiln. And you can vacuum up all the tiny little fragments if you do unfortunately have an explosion. I would average one explosion per firing, um, sometimes less if I do a really good job checking the work and if I do a good job making sure that I don't rush the process. So, you won't burn your school down, you'll get used to it. It's stressful, but it's exciting. And getting in the flow and figuring out works for you takes a few times but there's nothing more exciting than the day that you fire the kiln and the students are always super excited about it too.